Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be covering async IO, semaphores and bounded semaphores. As always, the full text version of this tutorial will be found on my site, TutorialEdge.net and I'll leave a link to this tutorial in the description below. So, just to give you a bit of background, semaphores were originally a key part of railway system architecture and it was the famous Dijkstra that translated this real world concept into our computing world. Now, for those of you that don't know, Dijkstra was a, an early pioneer in many research areas of computer science. I definitely recommend reading up on him. So, these semaphores have an initial counter that is incremented and decremented whenever either an acquire or a release call is made. So, say we protect the block of code with a semaphore and set the semaphore's initial value to 2. If one worker acquired the semaphore, the, se the value of our semaphore would be decremented to 1. If a second worker was then to come along, the semaphore's value would be decremented to zero. At this point, if yet another worker comes along and tries again, it would be denied. So this essentially allows us to protect resources from being overused or oversubscribed to. So now that we have a basic understanding of what semaphores are, let us now look at how we can work with them in our async IO based Python programs. So in this example, we will create a simple instance of a semaphore and then create three worker functions that try to acquire said semaphore. So let's get started. Import async.io and we're going to start by defining our an asynchronous worker. Async, async def my worker and it's going to take in our semaphore as its primary parameter. So first off, it's going to try and acquire the semaphore. So await semaphore.acquire I can't spell today. And once it's acquired the semaphore, it's then going to print successfully acquired the semaphore. After this, it's simply going to do await asyncio.sleep just to sort of simulate our my worker actually doing some work. And finally, it's going to do print releasing releasing semaphore and it's going to call it semaphore.release. So the key thing to note here is that the semaphore.acquire function is actually a coroutine. So in order for us to call that and await for it, we have to use the await keyword. On the other hand, the semaphore.release function is just an ordinary function that can be called. Next, what we want to do is define our main function. So async def main, and this is going to take in our loop. Uh, no, it's not, sorry. No parameters. Um, next, we're going to define our semaphore. So my semaphore equals asyncio.semaphore. Still can't spell. And we're going to set the initial value to equal to. And finally, we're going to do await asyncio.wait. And we're going to pass in three instances of our my worker. So my semaphore and copy this three times. I'm going to make this slightly bigger for everyone. And then we're going to finish by printing finished all workers. And outside of our main body, we're going to do loop equals async.get event loop and loop dot run until complete main and finally print our loop has completed before calling loop.close and tidying up. Perfect. So let's now try and run this. So Python 3.6 and I've called my file test.py. Give this a few seconds to run. You should see that our first two workers successfully acquire the semaphore. They then wait three seconds and release the semaphore before our third worker comes in and tries to acquire the semaphore again. Once it manages to acquire it, it then runs through its work and releases the semaphore. And finally we get to the end where it says finished all workers and our loop has completed. So now that we've covered semaphores, let's quickly move on to bounded semaphores. Now, the only real change we have to make is change asyncio.semaphore to asyncio.boundedsemaphore. 
And if we try and run this again, we should see the exact same functionality, the exact same results that we had with our original semaphore. Now, there's a very subtle difference between a normal semaphore and a bounded semaphore. A bounded semaphore only differs in terms of not allowing more release calls to be made than acquire calls. If a program does exceed the number of release calls, then a value error exception is raised. So that's all there really is to it. If you found this tutorial useful, then please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button and follow my channel for more AsyncIO and Python based tutorials. Cheers.